Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, uh, welcome. Welcome to Future Soundings, um, or the performance that concludes Future Soundings. Uh, some people here have just participated uh, in a, a workshop, so around uh, 20 participants uh, used, used an app to take them on a walk into the future of Bristol and wrote science fictions for the places that they went to. Uh, what you're about to hear are the collective, are their collective speculations or imaginings. Uh, so all the words that you hear uh, were written by people who are here in the room and written whilst they took a walk into the future. Um, and in the last 15 or 20 minutes, uh, Jess and Duncan uh, have been uh, composing these into a narration and a soundtrack uh, that you're about to hear. So this is their improvisation uh, with the soundings that workshop participants took of the future of Bristol. Okay. We are moving through time and the world around us is changing. Welcome to the 2030s. It's warm and sunny. It's muggy. A bit smeechy for the time of year. The sky is tinted the colour of rust, as it so often is the case these days. The buildings are higher with energy producing and absorbing qualities. There's green architecture in and amongst building design. The back of the council building might make you chuckle. Ever since they added the extra five floors, it looks like a sandcastle, with another slightly more damp sandcastle flopped on top. The people are of all nationalities and ethnicities, and there are no differentiators. People are relaxed and aware, a community supportive feel. The buildings providing an interaction opportunity for the people. However, there is also a Blade Runner type homelessness with breathing apparatus and people wear long coats and carry hidden weapons. It's 
nice to hear the sound of hooves. It's generally quieter. The traffic noise is still there, but only just. The work and living spaces have become so intertwined, it's hard to tell where work is happening. There are food stalls and bars. The boats have become makeshift homes, a bit like shanty housing. Nuclear is, or energy is nuclear now. And the energy has been embedded into the buildings and the architecture of the place, providing access to all. Technology is generally wearable, providing access uh, on a personalized and at a at-need basis. So we're moving to the 2040s now. It's still warm and dry. November is a, is a muggy month. It's mild and humid. You'll be dripping in sweat, but you'll also be cold. And today is mild, but gray and, and a little bit damp. The sky is the color of a dead television, gray and oppressive. The short-lived attempt to generate renewable architecture passed from the fashion in the 2030s. And there's more steel now than wood, more plastic than glass. The buildings are taller and a lot of them are empty. A lot of tower blocks have been built, but they mostly contain student rooms and expensive flats. People are in t-shirts and clothing has been recycled. It's vintage. And the theme is 1980s. The mass disabling event of the COVID pandemic has brought accessibility to the fore for the majority, alongside huge migrations which have broken the dominance of the English monoculture. We've developed fluid signing and sound expression able to communicate across language and accessibility barriers. Our new shared lexicon includes many phrases and vocabularies developed in the meme culture of the early 21st century. You can hear a cacophony of noise, music, rollerblades, bikes, talking, There's less traffic now. There are fewer vehicles. Everyone who can afford to now lives on higher ground. Everyone's living in high-rise flats, some large and some tiny. There are new intergenerational community buildings and spaces. People tend to walk or cycle, and there's a better, quiet public transport system. (laughs) 
Most of the energy comes from hydropower. As the water rose, we, we harnessed it, often at the expense of local communities. In this decade, you can hologram call your family, visiting them through AR. And analog is back in fashion too. The latest craze is 1970s Kodak film cameras. So we've moved forward again to the 2050s. The weather is extreme. You, I never thought November could be this warm. I love the heat, but the nature cycles in this city have really changed. It's scorching hot. It's balmy. The buildings shine everywhere. Surfaces designed to reflect and retract energy from the sun for energy consumption. The harbour side is more built up. Wealthier people look good. Some buildings have remained the same, of course. Beautiful restored sheds from Bristol's former life as a trading port. But now plants hang over them. We had to take these measures back in 2025 as urban heating hit hard from 2022 with regular 40 degree July highs. Boats are moving up and down this amazing floating harbour and we are once again a global port trade centre. People wear recycled, repurposed materials, synthetic but eco. People track their health with all forms of wearable devices, but some are less visible. Most people wear contact lenses that augment the environment, placing ads on buildings, giving menus outside of restaurants, and generally replacing all the functions of what smartphones used to be. Lots of people are promenading. We have slowed down. It's great that no one walks around looking at their mobile devices these days. Everyone smiles and says hello. I can hear so many different languages. I love all the colours people wear, all the soft, light fabrics and the variety of garments. You can hear the sound of wheels and axles, boats with electric motors splashing. You can hear loud, buzzy, buzz sounds. You can hear the sounds of birds and breezes. Living and working spaces are integrated. There are flats and houses. There are still the multicolored houses, but they look much older, and there are fewer chimneys. There are scooters and bikes, but people still walk on foot. And the sunlight, the sunlight is used for solar on all the buildings.
we're moving further forward in time now. It's 2075. Bristol is still a hot city. There are long, dry summers. People use the harbour, which is disrupted due to climate change, for comfort and cool. This winter has been one of the coldest so far in recent memory. Most of the buildings around here are much higher compared to those of the past to keep up with the growing population. At least they're more sustainable, with solar and nuclear power becoming the biggest energy sources for homes and buildings. tolerant past, people interact and behave relatively friendly with each other, even with those from backgrounds different or unfamiliar to theirs. The streets are usually very quiet, and technology is advanced to the point where machines and transportation makes little or no noise pollution. There aren't many homes around here. Maybe the hotels have become converted into apartments. Families have beautiful harbourside views as well as quick accessibility to the harbour's amenities. and the energy is totally renewable. Pledges to convert and reduce fossil fuels have been successful, and the world operates through solar and wind and other renewable sources. And AI is used to develop educational experiences and events, using virtual worlds to navigate and explore different learning journeys and experiences for people, not just young people, to learn more about the world around us and different communities and cultures. muggy, but it's raining. It's constantly raining. All the buildings have gone. The trees have replaced them, grown from long discarded nuts and seeds. There's a sense of post-human, like machine-like augmentations colourful for many different cultures and of interdeterminate, inter, interdeterminate genders. Despite the rain, people are in shorts and t-shirts and bright colours. And everyone's wearing headphones walking around, looking at their phones. They no longer communicate. There's very little sounds apart from the buzzing of WhatsApp messages. You can just hear the rain. No voices, no chatter, no laughter or music. 
just rain. Fire generates everything now. Heating, machinery and food. Everyone has an AI companion that provides advice and some level of friendship, especially within this large, largely digital world. Despite all of this, people are busy and there is a growth in community events and creativity. People are more advanced and comfortable with hybrid work and so are able to devote more time to external activities like the arts and community contributions. and creativity. People are more advanced and comfortable with hybrid work and so are able to devote more time to external activities like the arts and community contributions. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to say uh, thanks very much to, to Jess and to, to Duncan, um, and also thank you very much to all of those who joined us for the workshop and contributed um, your speculations about the future and all the extraordinary writing uh, that you've just heard. And thanks for joining us and listening.